Welcome to another tutorial by Brando Consulting. In this tutorial, we're going to fix your account mapping problems. If Fishbowl and QuickBooks are not matching correctly, this is one of the first places you want to look. If your parts are mapped wrong, then your inventory transactions, your sales transactions, your COGS transactions, any one of those transactions could go over to QuickBooks incorrectly. So let's take a look, see how to fix it. First of all, we'll go to the top left hand corner, click File, Export, select Part Product Vendor Pricing. Next, next, and I'll throw this on my desktop. Okay. So here is the Part Product Vendor Pricing Spreadsheet, also known as PP Vendor Pricing. First of all, I'm going to turn filters on, freeze panes so we can easily look at it. You'll see in column N we have asset account and COGS account. I'm going to go ahead and hide the columns I don't need and just look at the columns that matter. So we've got our part numbers and our part types and the asset account, the COGS account I'm going to hide these accounts, or these columns. I don't need those. I'm going to hide these columns. I don't need those. So now we're just looking at the income account, the asset account, and the COGS account. The next thing you need to do is look at this column, Part Type ID. I'm going to sort it from smallest to largest, and you'll see we've got Type ID 10, part type ID 20, 21, etc. To see what these mean, go back to Fishbowl, File, Export, Part Product Vendor Pricing, click Next, and print those instructions. Okay? That will give you the legend. It'll tell you part type ID 10 is inventory, 20 is service, 21 is uh, labor. 30 is non-inventory, so on and so forth. Okay, so print that out, get that in your hand, so you've got those instructions in your hand and you can tell what these are. So let's look at part type ID 10 first, that's your inventory type part. Now if this column is blank, then your parts are mapped to the default account. Okay, so that's the next thing to look at is to see what your default accounts are. To see what your default accounts are, follow me on this. Go to Reports, Reports, to your Reports screen. Then I'll just type in DEF for default. Double click. And we've got our default account mapping report. So if I'm looking at an inventory type part, I'm looking at the asset account, then I should look at the asset default account. That's inventory asset right here. We've got fishbowl accounts on the left. Those are the transactions. Fishbowl transactions. And on the right is the QuickBooks account. Now in this file, I want to map my inventory type parts to multiple accounts in QuickBooks. So I set my default to be a red flag account. Okay, I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet now that I know what my default account is. Go back to my spreadsheet and I know that if it's blank, it's the default account. You can print out that default account report. So what this is telling me, if I don't map it, then it's, it's going to be mapped to the red flag account. So now what I need to do is go through and enter in a QuickBooks account. In order to import to input the QuickBooks account correctly, go to QuickBooks and pull up your chart of accounts. So I'm going to do that. Go to QuickBooks. Chart of accounts. Okay, so in my chart of accounts, I have Fishbowl Inventory Asset as the parent, and then I have a finished good 
couple of WIPs, and a raw good account. In order to map it to the finished good account, I need to type in fishbowl inventory asset colon fishbowl, or excuse me, finish space good space inventory. So just like it is. First of all, fishbowl inventory asset, I think is what it was called, asset colon finish goods inventory with that same account. So you'll see that. So then I want to go through and somehow separate my raw goods from my whip and, and my finished goods. Maybe it'll be easier if I sort my part numbers from A to Z. And I know that these are custom builds, so those are finished goods. I may never use those part numbers again. I could inactivate those if I want. Now I'm going to filter this to only show inventory because I want to focus on one thing at a time. So we'll go down and say, yeah, this is a raw good or maybe a whip. Maybe I build that fishbowl inventory asset. to match exactly so you get the idea go down and map all your inventory accounts there okay so let's talk about this account this cogs account before we go on to part types that are not inventory your cogs account is used in the traditional gap principles so it's not going to be used by fishbowl unless you actually sell the part I almost think that it would be good if this COGS account was listed under products over here because a product is another name for a sellable part. We've got income account right here and COGS account and those are used when you sell the item only. The COGS account field is not used in work orders or anything like that. Um, when you do a work order the raw good asset account is credited. The finished good asset account is debited. Okay, so COGS is not used in the work order. Um, COGS is only used when a finished good is sold. So if it's a product that's for sale, then you'll want a COGS account. I don't know what my default account mapping is, so I'll go check my COGS default account mapping. It's cost of goods sold, good enough for me, so I'm going to leave that blank and let it be the default because I'm fine with it. Then the income account for items we sell, let's first check and see the default. The default account for income will look at that sales retail and it says wrong fishbowl mapping. So that tells me that I have more than one income account that I'm mapping to. Income, here we go. Sales retail, pool cover equipment sales, installation service, repair service. So I have different types of income that I sell. I'm going to use copy and paste. So I'll click edit account so I can copy that. Pool cover equipment sales and go back to my spreadsheet and we've got the income for the pool covers and we'll put the pool cover income account there. Okay, so if your fishbowl in QuickBooks is off and you've already set all this up but you're looking for something that's wrong, look for an inventory type part that is mapped to a COGS or a non-inventory type part that's mapped to an asset. So if your inventory type part is under this column is mapped to an expense type account or an income or a COGS account, then your inventory is going to be understated while you have the inventory because when you receive it, it's going to debit to the wrong account when it should be debiting to the asset account. Okay. 
Um, so that's a good place to look right there. And then if for whatever reason your cogs are mapped to an asset, right? So make sure that the account type is the correct account type in the correct column. And that might be a good place to start looking if you're mismatched and your accounts are off between Fishbowl and QuickBooks. Now we've looked at the asset type part. We've looked at this column for assets, this column for COGS, this column for income. I skipped adjustment and scrap. They're not, they're not that big of a deal. Um, both of these are usually mapped to an adjustment expense account. And it's usually just the default account. So it's okay if those are blank, because once again, if they're blank, they go to the default account. The variance account is not a work order variance. It's not a manufacturing variance. It's a standard cost variance. So if you're on the standard costing method, that account will be used. Usually there's only one variance account. So I'm gonna leave that blank, and you'll probably wanna leave it blank too if you're on the standard costing method, unless of course you have more than one variance account for whatever reason. Okay, so the next thing we wanna look at is the other part type IDs. So I'll uncheck 10 and check the rest of these. We've got service, uh, let me sort from smallest to largest. So we've got service, labor, I think this is overhead, non-inventory, et cetera, et cetera. Shipping, okay. Um, and the coding service. Okay, so in this company example, I send something out to be hard coded and I have a hard coding service that the vendor charges me for. So if I have a coding service on a purchase order and I receive that coding service, it's going to debit this account actually. So to clarify, this is kind of tricky. I'm going to click Alt Enter and add some clarification. I'll say expense account. You'll notice under accounts it has an expense account and a COGS account. So I like to add a little note just to remind, remind you that this is also being used as an, as an expense column for the parts that are not inventory. So coding charge, we want to see what the default account is for uh, service. So we'll go to the fishbowl report and we'll look for service and it looks like I've got it mapped to a red flag account because in QuickBooks I have multiple service expense type accounts that I want to choose from. So I'm going to start with something easy and I'll call this first one service on my spreadsheet and then we'll go down and map each one to its own specific account. Then labor and we've got non-inventory. So non-inventory is interesting. Non-inventory is something that's tangible that you hold in your hand that uh, you could put on the shelf and it has value but you've decided for whatever reason that it's immaterial. It's not worth tracking. So you've decided to call it non-inventory. Maybe the value is too small to matter, like nuts, bolts, washers, whatever. You can put a non-inventory type part on a bill of material, um, and you can receive a non-inventory type. You can pick it, you can pack it. So non-inventory goes on a pick ticket. However, non-inventory does not show up on the balance sheet. Fishbowl does not recognize quantity for a non-inventory, and um, non-inventory is tracked by an, a standard cost rather than the average cost or whatever costing method you chose. Okay, so on that note, these parts that are not inventory, I'm going to unhide this, get a standard cost no matter what costing method you're on. This is not when you receive it. When you receive it, it gets the actual cost. But when you consume it in a work order, Fishbowl uses the standard cost. 
for your service, your labor, your non-inventory, your overhead, okay? So standard cost becomes a consideration for these types of parts. Once again, make sure you create a practice type environment. Create a copy of your live fishbowl file, a copy of your live QuickBooks file, and connect them. And test these out and make sure that these accounts are working the way you want because they can be tricky. It can be difficult to predict what Fishbowl is going to do if you don't understand the, the software and how it works. So it's, it's always best practice to set up a practice environment and test it and watch it flow over. But of course, if you're in your live file and you're trying to fix something, then this is, this is what you need to do is make sure these are mapped correctly your costs are correct on your non-inventory type parts. If you sell it, it's mapped to an income account. Okay, so hopefully that gave you what you needed to go through and map your parts correctly. Check to see if they're mapped incorrectly. Once you're done with this spreadsheet and you've got all your accounts mapped correctly, then you can import that spreadsheet into Fishbowl. Importing the spreadsheet does not create a, tra a transaction in QuickBooks. Um, it, it doesn't. If you're on the standard costing method and you edit that standard cost and import it, that will create a transaction. That will create a cost adjustment that will go over to QuickBooks. But in this example, we're just changing accounts. That's all we're doing, changing account mapping. So that will affect what will happen in the future it's not going to change anything retroactively in the past okay so to import this into fishbowl we need to take this back off and save it i save that to my desktop then go to file import part product vendor pricing click next and browse to it desktop part product vendor pricing finish and there you go